so we know that our unemployment rate is higher than the national average. And um, we know that the most difficult job to get is that first job, right? So one of the reasons that I supported work requirements for able-bodied individuals without dependence is that it was not just a job requirement, but um, if they could not find a job, there was a provision in both of those pieces of legislation that the governor vetoed that uh, would have placed people into job training. So um, I've spent some time looking at the various um, job training programs, um, the tools and the programs that labor and industry uh, offers, as well as um, the programs that DCED, Human Services, Department of Education offer for job training and job placement. So um, a couple of issues with regard to redundancy of programs and outcomes. So um, I'm interested in, in understanding how your department has been working with those other departments um, to help assure that um, there's not redundant job training programs being offered. So uh, it probably doesn't make sense for everyone to be offering the same type of job right. training program. We should diversify and hopefully we diversify in a way that meets the needs of employers providing people who need jobs with the skills that employers need to fill the jobs that they have available. Um, you know, I, I think we certainly have ways that we can be um, more collaborative and less likely to be working in silos. So I'm really curious to know if there is overlap, and if so, what do you think uh, some of the ways are that we can improve the system and get more Pennsylvanians the skills and tools that they need to obtain those jobs and careers? And then with regard to your job training program, um, you know, how, are you measuring those outcomes? And how exactly do you define success when you're measuring those outcomes? So, um, you know, the number of people getting jobs, the number of people retaining those jobs, um, how exactly do you define and measure success? Uh, there are several questions there, and let me break it down a little bit. I think part of what uh, the response I gave to Senator Haywood about some of the, since the Apprenticeship and Training Office and PA Smart, they're relatively new. And it is, it, we are hearing anecdotally that there are, there, there's a lot of success. Uh, we are, are working on getting a, a firmer grip on, uh, on the stats. One of the, the reasons that we're looking at making changes in career links, for example, working with DHS, is that, um, there are a lot of federal requirements that have to be met, and we want to get beyond just checking off that someone has a job. We want to see where are they in six months, a year. Are, are they able to overcome those obstacles that we've talked about? So that's, that's a piece of that as well. So we're looking at what changes we can make uh, in tracking uh, how our uh, clients do who go through career links, many of whom are um, in the you know, folks who are in the EARN program. Um, one of the, the things that the governor has talked about since he took office and I think is, is embodied in the Keystone Command Center, part of the SWEEP program, the statewide, uh, education and account the statewide Workforce Education and, and Accountability Program, is to break down those silos, connect those dots as we've talked about before. We do not want to find out that we're doing the same program as DCED or the Department of Ed or DHS or Department of Health or whatever whatever the, the uh, area may be. So that, that's why we, the way the command center will be structured is uh, there'll be three cabinet officers, part of the executive team, myself at L&I, uh, Secretary Bookfar from State, and uh, Secretary Davin from DCED, um, Gene Barr, Rick Bloomingdale, who are part of the um, uh, middle class task force will be on that as well. Uh, Auditor General Di Pasquale will be a part of that. Uh, we'll take some of the, uh, information that he's garnered from the workforce audit. We're gonna put all of that together under that structure to connect those dots, to make sure that we are not being redundant, to see how we can better utilize the dollars that we have. Are there things that we're missing? Are there things that we're uh, doing repeatedly? So uh, I, I look forward to being a part of that to address the issues that you're raising. So essentially we can look forward to um, seeing all the different uh, job training and placement programs along with some kind of measure of success and outcome in the near future, 
um, do you we have may, a timeline We may have that? some of that now, and I, I will go back and look to talk to our apprenticeship and training office and our uh, Center for Workforce Information and Analysis to see what we do have based on the programs that we've uh, initiated uh, under the Wolf administration. And uh, if we have that, we'll certainly share that with the committee. Uh, it, it, it does take some time to, to develop the stats that are meaningful, uh, and we, we uh, don't want to base it just on anecdotal information. We do want to provide those stats as soon as we have what we believe are reliable. Uh, and I certainly appreciate that because, you know, you need to have meaningful data to drive, you know, we're spending policy. money on these right. things. And it, to drive good public policy and the investment of taxpayer dollars, we want the best data we possibly can have. Absolutely. Thank you.